Walnut looks horrible with water-based finishes, which sucks because they're so easy to use. And sure, there's other finishes, but they all have their own problems. Well, I have searched for literal years, but I have finally come across the solution. So in this video, let's torture test one special line of finishes to the bitter end, because after all, we all want the same thing, an easy, durable, affordable finish, and most importantly, it needs to look good too. The line of products that I'm choosing to test are the Halcyon Clear products. I tried the clear satin on a recent project since I needed an exterior grade finish, and I was surprised to see that I ambered the wood like an oil or solvent based finish. And I've never seen this from a water based product before. So I couldn't help but wonder what it might look like on walnut, since walnut is the high maintenance problem child it is, it'll be a perfect way to test these finishes to their limits. So for this video, I reached out to Total Boat and they offered to supply all three different types of Halcyon Clear, which is perfect because I really wanna test how these finishes perform, and I'm sure you do too. <sighs> I got this long board of rustic walnut for these tests. It's long enough to make sure that I get enough similar samples and thick enough to make sure I can resaw them. So let's get this cut. When it comes to film finishes, application can be a little tricky. So let's test the three different finishes with different application methods to see how they turn out. First up is the clear satin. Typically for the first coats, also known as build coats, they recommend using the gloss products first to avoid clouding. But we will cross that bridge when we get to it. So for now, let's test the products as is. I wanna test brushing since that will be a method that a lot of you choose. I'm definitely noticing while brushing that it lays down quite nicely and a little bit goes a long way. Not every finish brushes well, so I'm actually surprised by this. And as they begin to dry, I'm amazed. The brush marks seem to be disappearing. The next method is rolling and tipping, just not with this giant roller. This usually makes the process a bit faster and tipping with a brush is supposed to smooth things over. HVLP is another great option if you have the equipment. For these tests, I'm not gonna reduce the finish with water at all because I don't wanna skew the final results. And so far, my spray gun is atomizing it just fine, at least for these small test pieces. So one thing that I'm noticing as I'm spraying these is the satin sprays fine, and then the gloss sprays even better, and then the amber gloss sprays even better. So I don't know what the difference is between them or if it's just me. <laughs> <sighs> and my favorite method by far is an airless for water-based finishes. Any products I'm using will be in the description. At first, it seems like an airless is a pain in the butt to set up, but it's really not after you get used to it and it lays down better than any other application method. I'm not really noticing much of a difference between each product though. Everything laid down extremely smooth and I think we can start our next coat. All right, so coat number two is done and I'm surprised. Everything is flowing out nice and smoothly. My favorite is still the airless because it goes on like glass practically but I'm honestly surprised by brushing. The strokes just disappear, especially as it begins to dry longer and longer. I swear, it just like, it smooths right out, almost like it's sprayed, so that's amazing. But the third and last coat is absolutely the most important because it sets the stage for the final look and feel. But before we do that, I wanna test how it sands because there's a plethora of different problems that can arise when you're sanding finishes. I'm using 320 grit with an orbital to start, mainly because that's how I usually sand every other finish. 
although the directions do say to sand with the grain. So to soften these scratch marks, I'm going to use a fine grit soft pad at the end, sanding with the grain to hopefully smooth everything over. I definitely like how all of these finishes are sanding. It powders up nicely and it sands quickly, but not too quickly so that I don't get too much burn through. Another thing is if they're telling you to sand with the grain, usually that means those scratch marks are going to translate through into your top coat. So since I used an orbital, let's see if those scratch marks end up translating through, even with me softening them with that pad. I seem to be getting a few more air bubbles in my finish than before. Especially with the HVLP, I got tons of air bubbles. I think the air bubble problem might be in part due to the packaging. Since it's in these pour packs, you have to shake the material in order to get it mixed, and that introduces air. You're really supposed to be using a stir stick. So you could pour this into another container and then mix it, but that defeats the purpose and now you're using multiple containers. I wish they just put it in a can like every other finish out there. As the samples are drying though, I'm noticing the air bubbles are getting a lot smaller and much harder to notice. So the samples are done and these are the satin ones. We have brushed, tipped, HVLP, and airless. And I have to admit, for having three coats of satin, there's a lot of clarity and this looks just like a solvent coating, which is very, very surprising. I had a few problems here and there, but overall, everything is incredibly smooth and I'm very happy with the results. One thing is the brushed sample did take four coats. When I did the third coat, the 320 grit scratch marks did end up translating through. So I just sanded it with a fine pad and recoated it, no problem. So I would suggest maybe using 400 grit or sanding with the grain like they recommend. On the airless sample, it came out much darker and richer for some reason, but it's also a lot shinier. And I'm wondering if it's because I didn't clean the sprayer well enough, switching from gloss to satin. So I redid the sample and the satin came out perfect, much better. So lesson learned, just clean your sprayer really well when you're switching between the two. Overall, I would actually say the brushed and tipped sample is the smoothest out of all of them even the airless, because the airless has a couple bubbles, but the tipped one doesn't have any bubbles at all. The next samples are the gloss samples. And the first thing that I noticed is that they're a little bit darker and a little bit more rich, which we could utilize that in our build coats, which I'll try in a little bit. One thing I don't like is that walnut is a little coarse and with gloss, it just doesn't seem to look that great. So when I'm doing a gloss finish on walnut, I will spend extra time to fill the grain and spend days on the actual finish, like in this video. Again, the brushed sample did end up needing four coats, and the HVLP sample did have a few air bubbles. Other than that though, the finish came out great. The next samples are the amber gloss samples, and there is one noticeable difference. They are definitely more yellow. And each one has a slightly different color than the last based on how thick each coating went on. For example, the tipped sample went on the thinnest, so it's the lightest color, while the HVLP sample went on the thickest, so it's a little bit darker. Everything is very similar to how the gloss samples came out. The brush sample did need four coats, but the HVLP sample didn't get any air bubbles at all, which is nice. So here's the three different colors side by side. And on camera, it doesn't seem like there's much difference. The main difference is that the gloss is a little bit darker than the satin. And obviously the amber gloss is more yellow than the rest. I made some other test samples last week so that they would have a chance to cure for seven days, which is the longer of the three to seven day cure time that Total Boat recommends. I'm using three different samples because I want to see if the flattener in the satin happens to make it less durable, or if the amber gloss happens to be more durable than a normal gloss. Let's see. Nail polish remover is made of acetone, so for that I'm just using acetone. The balsamic vinegar is a way for me to test a dark acid, and denatured alcohol is just a strong alcohol, so that will be a good test. I let everything sit for a half an hour, then I wiped it off.
The next way to abuse this finish is by heating up a mug to 165 degrees and setting it directly onto the test sample. If 10 minutes of this doesn't cause damage, then I don't know what will. I might as well perform a dent test while I'm at it. Some finishes turn white when you dent them, so I'm just looking for signs of that. And a good old keychain smack will test if it's resistant against sharp materials. For the water tests, we'll get better information if we perform a few different types of tests. I'm wetting the rag and heating it up to a very specific temperature. This just simulates a type of water and heat exposure together. The next test is a submersion test to simulate being on a boat or perhaps sitting in wet snow. I'm letting them soak for a half an hour each, but I'm also letting one sample sit overnight just to see what happens. The last one is going to be a fun one, mainly because it pertains to cold winter climates. I'm submerging the sample for 10 minutes, then immediately putting it in the freezer to simulate a wet day followed by a frozen winter night outdoors. And by the way, these samples are sealed on every single face and edge for this test. It's got like frozen water droplets on it. I'm pretty impressed. I have to admit like, there is nothing wrong with this piece of wood. We'll see once everything thaws out cause it could cause more problems when it's thawing, but it's looking good. <laughs> okay, wow, these performed way better than I thought they were going to. Aside from the few chemical spots that we got, which is actually pretty standard for finishes like this, they performed very, very well. I can't get it back in the groove. Go in the groove. We have no spot from the hot mug. The dent test is just barely dented and the key spots are incredibly tiny and almost, you can't even see them really. Uh, the only difference I might have noticed was that the amber gloss key spots were a tiny bit more noticeable, which would make sense because they are on a gloss product. And for the hot rag tests, I am surprised. Nothing happened. 10 minutes of a scorching hot rag. I was expecting some white or glazing, something to happen, but they're perfect. Literally perfect, 100%. Not to mention, they soaked for quite a long time and we only got a few of them to even have some sort of water infiltration. And I looked it up and Total Boat recommends seven to eight coats if you're gonna have something exterior and these only had three coats. So they actually performed pretty dang well for soaking, especially the overnight one. And it has almost no issues except for that one edge. And now that the frozen one is thawed, it's still showing no signs of problems at all. The only thing I absolutely wish as far as durability goes is I wish there was a catalyst that we could add to the finish to make it more chemical resistant. Other than that, I'm extremely happy and now we can take a closer look at some of the physical attributes like color, clarity, and overall appearance. So I mentioned earlier that they don't recommend doing several coats of satin because you can start losing clarity. So I figured we should test that. So I made a test sample of each, one with satin build coats, one with gloss build coats, and one with amber gloss build coats. But all of them have a final coat of satin. And there's a few things that I noticed. The satin build coats make it seem the lightest in color, while the gloss build coats make it seem the richest and darkest. And then the amber gloss build coats just give it a little bit of a yellowy hue. But overall, the clarity is not much different. I think my personal favorite one is the middle one with gloss build coats because it's the darkest and richest. So let's compare that to some other finishes to see how it looks. Rubio is on the left and my favorite solvent urethane is on the right. It's interesting to see how much more depth of color and clarity the Halcyon has over Rubio or even the solvent coating. And I also think the color is most true to what Walnut actually looks like. And here's what it looks like next to two other water-based polyurethanes. 
It's crazy how yellowish white the left one is, and the right one just looks like faded, unfinished walnut. So now that we know this finish is worth it, let's talk price. During this time of filming, it cost around 37 bucks per quart from the Total Boat website, or you can get four quarts for 130. You could cut some costs by only doing one or two coats, and it would still look great. But as far as I'm concerned, this is cheaper than what I'm used to, so I will be happy paying this price, especially for these results. Terrific! I'm glad it all worked out, and it's about time a company takes finishes to the next level. I put links to all the products that I use in the description below, and go check out the Fortress shop if you want to support us. Thanks! Hey, if you truly enjoyed this content, click subscribe on the left, and here's another awesome video to watch.